What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. We're gonna call this part three of the Willy's Hood. I'm pretty excited actually about this new tool. I've never used shrinking discs in the past. I've heard lots about them. I've done lots of uh, research on them, but uh, I've never actually used one. So I bought one from Ray Shaleen, Pro Shaper. This is his, I believe, nine inch disc. I bought a kit. I think it came with a nine inch and a five inch. And I've watched his YouTube videos on it. Basically, this video is just gonna be about me using it on this hood. I've already done a little section, which I did film, and I smashed my phone and lost a ton of footage, so this is actually my second time using this wheel. This hood right now, in the past, I would have probably heat shrunk. Heat shrinking is a process where you use a torch and you heat up a little spot and you use a hammer and you kind of shrink the metal with heat. I would like to actually do a video on that as well. I'm really comfortable with heat shrinking. I've used it for years, but for the sake of this video, I want to use this shrinking disc on this hood. From what I can tell, shrinking discs are really great for shrinking in the right spots because basically any high spots that you have are what has too much metal, what needs to be shrunk. If you've been following along with the Willys hood, the big creases in this hood, where actually if you come a little closer, you can see what I'm talking about. You can see right where those large creases were. This is the outline of the large tree fall dent that was in the hood. Those spots I can feel are still high. I can show you that they're high with just 120 grit sandpaper on a block. If I scrub it like this, you can see it's highlighting the high spots here. That is what the shrinking disc is going to touch. So the shrinking disc itself, it does shrink using heat. The way it creates the heat is it's spinning stainless disc against metal. So metal on metal friction is creating the heat. And when you're using that disc and holding it flat, it's only gonna touch the high spots or the spots that are stretched out that need to be shrunk. On Ray's video, he calls it the equalizer. Basically, it takes down the highs and gives a release of tension so that the lows can come up and equalize or become on the same plane. So I'm, I think we should just get right into it and I'll show you using the planishing hammer and the shrinking disc how good we can get this hood. It's already pretty good. We've, we're within, you know, bodywork standards of an eighth of an inch of filler or so, but I, I do believe we can get it much, much better. Let's get into it, guys. Now that we've got a little bit of shrink in it, I'm just gonna hammer and dolly some of those high spots. Pushing up on the lows, this would be an example of a low. I'm pushing up with the dolly on the low and I'm gonna be hitting the highs with the slapper. It's already come out a little bit. We're gonna hit it with the shrinking disc one more time here. Cool it, cooling it pulls everything back together. This is just regular water with a bit of dish soap. That's all it is. It's already much better.
trying to pull up a little low spot here, using the dolly as a bit of a hammer. It's getting pretty close. So in the past videos, uh, we found out that we've got a six inch radius on the edges here, and we've got about a 36 through the middle. And then up front here, we've got uh, about a 14. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna kind of stay away from the front. There is a, uh, a terrible patch underneath there that I don't wanna get into. For our demonstration purposes, we're just gonna smooth this area out. So I'm gonna use my 36 inch radius, lower anvil. That's the radius of this curve is 36 inches. You can imagine 36 inches, three feet away from this would be the center of the radius. That's how that is measured. So I'm gonna use that on my planishing hammer here. Just gonna open it up, bring it inside. Light pressure, and you gotta be careful not to go too hard here if you're gonna use one of these. If you go a little bit too hard, you'll end up stretching the metal back out and that's just undoing what we're doing. Right now we're trying to planish, so I'm using less air pressure and light pinching pressure on the dies. And here we go. All right, after round one with our shrinking disc and the planishing hammer, we've got quite a bit of it out. I'd like to show it to you. One trick that Racheline uses, instead of using blue dye or layout fluid, use these giant Sharpies, and uh, this is gonna help highlight our highs and lows. Okay, now that this is a little bit dry, this is basically just to show us our highs and lows. When we scrape it up with the sandpaper, we're gonna see what's high, what's low, so that we can address those areas. Ooh. Catch. <laughs> oh, Christina just caught the planishing hammer from falling, and I just dropped an anvil. Doing good. Not just a pretty yeah, she's functional, guys. <laughs> okay, so you can see that actually here's quite good. It's showing a little bit of a low. It's not even so much a low as it is rougher material, but we've got a bit of a low here, a little bit of a low here. This is our high. There's a little bit of stuff in here, but it's really not that much. So we're gonna go back to the shrinking disc for another round. And the shrinking disc is gonna touch on those high spots. Another thing that using the sandpaper does is it takes off this marker. The marker itself will actually act as a little bit of a barrier between the shrinking disc and the steel. You want the steel to touch steel. You want it to be metal on metal. If there's marker or dye or anything on there, it's gonna make it harder to heat up. So using the little bit of sandpaper to, to show the highs is kind of dual purpose. It shows you the highs and it also takes off the ink on the highs so that the disc can touch metal on metal, create heat and shrink. So let's go for it one more time here with the nine inch disc. Using my polisher for it, it's a variable speed polisher. I know Ray just uses a regular grinder. I don't know if there's any advantages to being able to variable speed it, but uh, that's my biggest grinder, so that's what I'm using. Okay, here we go again.
cooling the metal off. Heating it up expands it, cooling it contracts it. Man, it's it's really close. I can I can barely feel that. But I think we can still get a little more out. So once again, I can see that there's a little low spot here, so that's where I'm gonna put my dolly, pushing up from the backside on this low spot, hitting down on the high spots. Okay, we've got a definite high here and a low here. You can see where the shrinking disc made this spot really shiny. It also made this spot really shiny and it did not touch right in here. So once again, this area I'm pushing up with the dolly down on these highs. Feeling pretty good. We're getting pretty close. I'm gonna try the shrinking disc one more time. I already see that the shrinking disc is actually touching a lot more of the metal now. You can see big shiny spots here so that it's actually covering more surface area and that's because we're having less high spots and low spots and more of an equal panel. It's actually getting quite close. Well, it's just about gone. I'm gonna go to the planishing hammer for another round here. See if we can't smooth it out a little more. Give it some WD-40 lubrication. See where we're at. <laughs> Definitely can't feel it through gloves now. Wow. Let's have a look at it with the uh, marker on it. See so yeah, how most of that marker is coming off. This is where our main crease was. That was one of our big lows. That's right up to snuff now. Right here is the same plane. There's, I guess, a tiny bit of a low in there still. There's little bits of lows there, but I mean, ultimately this is worlds, worlds better than it was. And uh, we haven't spent too long on it. So I am gonna continue with it. I'm gonna, 
you know, maybe spend another hour or so doing that same technique of shrinking, coming back with the planishing hammer and, uh, and trying to work out all those small dents. But all in all, I'm super impressed with that shrinking disc. It makes my life a lot easier. The thing that I love about it most is that it basically knows where it needs to shrink based on it being flat and all the highs being high. When you use a torch to shrink, you've got to feel your spot, you know, estimate where you're going to need it, and you've got to heat shrink a bunch of little dots, hammering and dollying each time, cooling as you go. The shrinking disc seems to be a lot smoother of an operation. It definitely has its limitations. The shrinking disc is not as effective for doing heavy shrinks. If you really need to shrink something, like somebody shot a golf ball inside your truck and made a big dimple on the outside, the shrinking disc isn't gonna take that out. You're gonna have to heat shrink that one. But for something like this, where you're very close and there's slow waves in the metal that you're trying to relax out of there, the shrinking disc is, it's amazing. I'm converted. It's an awesome tool. I'll never be without one. But that's it for part three. I'm gonna keep going on this. Thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to like, hit subscribe, click notifications, tell your friends we're here at least twice a week. We love you guys. On that note, speaking of loving people that are on YouTube, <laughs> Hardcore Fab gave us a big shout out and I'd like to shout him back and say thank you so much for telling your subscribers about us. I have checked out Hardcore Fab and he builds some really cool hot rods. He shows you kind of every step of the way. And if you haven't checked out Hardcore Fab, do yourself a favor and check him out because uh, he does some really great content, builds some really cool stuff. So thanks a lot for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Make It Custom. Take her easy.